Usually, we think of a saint as someone with superhuman endurance and trials, someone who exceeds all we could ever reach in terms of sanctity, someone whom we should strive to emulate with little likelihood of success. In some cases, we also consider saints to be wonder workers who either, when alive or since dead, work miracles for us, from finding our car keys to curing cancer. Finally, we say a saint is someone whom the leaders of the church have declared, canonized, to be a saint. On this feast, when we consider all the saints rather than focusing on one or the other, what do we see? We do indeed see examples of heroic faith like Polycarp and Thomas Moore and the martyr children who sang hymns on their crosses in Japan. We see extraordinary learning and piety as in Thomas Aquinas, Teresa of Avila, and Catherine of Siena. But is that all we see? We also see Edward the Confessor, canonized by command of the Norman rulers of England to mollify their Anglo-Saxon subjects after Edward failed in his vocation as king and opened the way to the Norman conquest. We see Joan of Arc leading an army in a procession of murder and pillage across the French countryside for the sake of the kingdom, not of God, but of Charles VII. We see Vincent Ferrer preaching at Jews and then consigning to the torturers those who refused his exhortation to be baptized. The American satirist Ambrose Bierce was not all wrong when he defined a saint as a dead sinner revised and edited. To be told to honor this, that, or the other saint? No problem. But to honor all saints? That's a bit much to swallow. Is a saint someone who does extraordinary things for the sake of God? Sometimes, but not always. Might then a saint be someone in whom God does extraordinary things? That makes a big difference. Sanctity is not something people do. It is something God does. God works through the holy and the hateful, the wise and the witless, the attractive and the abhorrent. They do not even have to agree to God's using them. The fact that the infants murdered by Herod have a feast of their own reminds us of that. And what does God do with that motley crew? One thing is to show us that in every age, in every circumstance, God continues to work in the world. God's love and the work of the Holy Spirit were not limited to some golden age when men and women were superhuman, nor were they limited to the lifetime of Jesus. In that case, Remembering all saints becomes a reminder that God can be, and in fact is, at work in the time, place, and life which I live. That is the reason that in the early days of the church, saints were not people separated out from among the rest of Christians. All Christians were called saints. So, am I one among all the saints? Well, I suppose if some of the other people who've been declared saints can be, I guess I can fit in somehow or other. But it's an uncomfortable thought, thinking of myself as a saint. I don't match up to the good ones, and I want nothing to do with the bad ones, in part because I don't want to admit that I fit into their company better than I wish. Perhaps that is a reason we abandon the practice of calling ourselves saints. As a Christian, I have been chosen by God to be a herald of God's love. I may do that by word or deed, or I may only show it by being a sign of how tolerant God is in putting up with me, with having the divine message depend upon such as me. One of the admonitions I heard uncomfortably often in my adolescence was, act your age. Perhaps I have a similar admonition given to me in the reminder today that all saints includes me. Act your sainthood. In my baptismal union with Christ, I am one of the saints. Knowing that, perhaps I can make better choices about the sort of saint I will be.